So it's the year 2012, and I finally got around to purchasing a Netflix subscription, thanks to the 3DS eShop reminding me of the service's existence, and how all the cool people I know already have it, have had it, and couldn't live half a single freaking day without it, even if they knew it would be back on tomorrow. So, I checked off my favorite genres and all that nonsense, and Archer, I don't know if it even showed up then, but none of my friends recommended it to me before either. I just remember seeing the Season 1 DVD box in store, and my eye was drawn to it. And not just because of the sexy ladies. I could sum up my feelings for the first season, the only season I've gotten around to watching so far, in one sentence. Sweet. Uh, actually, that's one word. So, um, really freaking sweet. Alright. Uh, first thing I noticed about Archer is that it blended a spy-themed environment, you know, James Bond and blah, 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 and so on. It was sort of a family environment, though not quite really. It's not like watching The Simpsons or Family Guy, but maybe more like Futurama, with the cast that's always shooting each other or having tons of groovy sex with each other. Or maybe both at the same time, you know, who knows. So. Though I, I just did remember that Peter Griffin is known for beating the shit out of his daughter, so maybe it is kind of like Family Guy after all. So you gotta love how the characters interact with each other, which is what really makes an animated sitcom to begin with. You've got Sterling Archer, who in any other context would be incredibly dislikable, treating his lifelong personal attendant like shit and then some, and thinks nothing of fucking or killing people on a whim and is always screaming at somebody over something or other. You know, he's just really one irate archer. And combine that with the fact that the head of his agency is his mother. You know, he even calls her mother. And she constantly sends him on potentially lethal missions, of course, and sometimes she's sort of the very reason why they could be lethal. Now, the show is very far from being based around this irate archer and his mom, Mallory, who apparently gave her son her first name as his middle name. His daddy wasn't around to have a say in the matter. So, the main love interest of, I guess, Archer and definitely a financial manager guy, Cyril, is a freaking riot. Her name? Lana Kane. She's got ginormous guns, and by that I mean actual guns, and boobies, and she's got attitude. Uh, real chick with spunk. Maybe that's where the Futurama thing came in for me. She's like watching a black non-cyclops Leela at times, but also if you remember the Seinfeld Manhands episode, you'll have a similar run-on joke that they've got going on here. And speaking of Seinfeld, if you remember Jerry and Elaine used to date, well, Archer and our friend here used to date, and it's brought up every now and then. It's quite awkward, and that's why it's funny. Anyway, to keep things short, my favorite Lana moments are when she's pulling an archer on archer and putting his pain receptors to work, or considering how oversensitive in a whiny little boy way Cyril is, watching her chill off the aggression and be soft with him is really unnatural, on purpose, and that's gotta make you laugh. Only other comment I've gotta make is that Archer is voiced by H. John Benjamin, which is really weird because to me he has sort of an ordinary guy voice, and... Hearing it come from a super secret buff agent like Archer is kind of like if Arnold Schwarzenegger had the voice of Daffy Duck. Okay, it's not that unusual, but I feel like that's part of the joke. At, at times I'm waiting for Archer to stop what he's doing and scream about the joys of owning a hamburger restaurant, but seeing how Archer started airing in September 09 and Bob's Burgers first hit living room screens in January of 11, yeah... It does kind of irk me that Bob's gets to be the more popular show, being on Fox and all, while Archer's on FX, but the violence and sex is really taken up a notch here. It was pretty much the same shot of South Park airing on CBS before the Big Bang Theory. So that's a bit of season one setup in a nutshell. I won't go into detail about the actual storylines of each episode, because my job here is to give you an outline, and if you like what you're hearing, you'll go give it a shot. Who wants to listen to a guy reveal all the juicy tidbits when it's right there for you to go find and have a freaking field day or two with? Or three. Or four. Or...